Hello everyone and welcome back to another video here at the Intent Hockey Channel. Today we've got a few things to discuss, including a signing over with the New York Rangers, a couple of injury updates, and some trade rumors involving the Vancouver Canucks, LA Kings, and St. Louis Blues. We'll get to all that coming up right now. Hello and welcome back to another video here at the Intent Hockey Channel. I'll kick things off today with a signing that has happened over the last week, as the New York Rangers have extended third pair defenseman Ben Harper to a two-year contract extension that will carry an average annual value of $787,000 and a deal will kick in next season. Now Harper had a lot of difficulty getting a contract this year. He was a good depth defenseman for Nashville last year but wasn't really able to get a contract extension anywhere else. It really was hard for him to find somewhere. He did go to the Rangers camp on a professional tryout in training camp but he was not able to get one and was released but was later during the season signed to a one-year league minimum deal with the Rangers and he started in the AHL and he actually did quite well putting up three goals and five assists in 17 AHL games and then when the Rangers had seen enough of defenseman Zach Jones and thought that he could probably use some time in the AHL, they brought Harper up to the NHL level and he did quite well. He's been their third pair of defenseman mostly since he's been called up and he's just run with that third pair of spot for the Rangers. He's had a goal and four assists in 19 NHL games this year so far, playing mostly on the third pair with Braden Schneider and he's definitely taken that third pair role on the left side and run with it. So he's definitely done really well. A lot better than last year. Last year he got into 19 NHL games with the National Predators and in six AHL games with their affiliates. And he had one assist in the NHL and no points in the AHL. So he's done a fantastic job this year. Definitely showing that he can be a good depth defenseman. So good for him to get the contract extension. I'm not exactly sure if he can continue to be a third pair defenseman for the duration of this contract extension. I think that the Rangers could probably, in the long run, find another third pair defenseman. But I do think that he's a really good seventh defenseman and can come in whenever there's injuries. And I think extending Harper to a two-year contract extension that's really cheap and won't really have too much cap implications for the Rangers, I think is great. And I think given the fact that Harper's just shown really good stuff this year, after signing his one-year contract in season, he should continue to do well for the Rangers. So I like the signing very much for both the Rangers and Harper. It allows Harper to remain with the organization for another two seasons and also allows the Rangers to get a good seventh defenseman locked up for the foreseeable future so good job for both the player and the team to work out this contract extension now that's all the signings we want to get to next we'll go over to the injury update part of the video i'll start with the buffalo sabers as there have been a couple of more injury updates over there now we talked about last video how the sabers could probably get cousins and samuelson back before the all-star break and they did Cousins was able to get back from his undisclosed injury, and Samuelson came back from his lower body injury, and both were able to return to game action. Samuelson's a really good top four defenseman, really emerged as a really good defenseman last year, and he's carried his success onto this year. He also signed a contract extension just before the season started that looks really, really good right now, so I definitely think that Samuelson getting back into game action is great for them. Cousins seems to be a really key top six center for the Sabres for now and in the future. So getting Cousins back is good. The Sabres are really trying to push for a playoff spot. So getting two young guys who are key pieces in their lineup back is great for the Sabres. The one bad note on the injury front for the Buffalo Sabres was that Thompson, who was also injured and dealing with upper body injury, did get back into game action against the Boston Bruins. But it seems like he re-injured his injury. And he now is going to be out again with another upper body injury. And he's going to be out for an unknown period of time. Now due to this injury, Thompson is now going to miss the All-Star game, in which case Sabres defenseman Rasmus Dahlin will replace him in the All-Star festivities. But just not really good for Thompson. He just can't catch a break right now. Hopefully with the Sabres having a long layoff and him now not going to the All-Star game, he's ready and back into game action within a game or two of them coming back from the All-Star break. So hopefully he's not out too, too long. But definitely not a good injury update for the Sabres losing their star first line center for at least the next little while. Now over with the Boston Bruins, they've had both good and bad news on the injury front. Uh, recent call up Vinny Letary for the Boston Bruins, who has at this point not gone into any game action for the Bruins, was recently caught up due to the Bruins having some injuries. 
he's now injured and is going to be out an unknown period of time with a lower body injury. So I don't think this injury is too substantial. Letary had been playing in the AHL up to this point. He's a good 13th, 14th forward, but he hadn't been called up basically in the entire season up until this point. So I don't think the injury to Letary will be too substantial of a loss to Boston. Hopefully he'll be able to get back in game action soon. And if the Bruins get healthier by then, he could easily just go back down to the AHL. So I don't think the injury to Letary is too big. But the bigger injury update was that Trent Frederick is back and healthy after suffering a lower body injury that kept him out for a couple of days. Now, Frederick's a really good third line forward. He's a really good physical type forward and can really help their big hitter too. He can also produce a little bit offensively and looks like a really good third line forward. So, really good to see him get back in the game action. He only missed a couple of days, but he has been in and out of the lineup over the past couple of weeks due to injuries. So, good to see him get back in the game action and not miss too much time. Hopefully, Frederick can continue to be a good third line physical presence for the Boston Bruins and show that he's a really good NHL forward. Over in Florida, there's been three injury updates as a couple of players have gotten healthy, but another player has once again gotten an injury. Now, I'll start with the good news for the Panthers as Sam Bennett and Eric Stahl have both gone back in the game action after recovering from their injuries. Now, we knew that last week Bennett looked like he was going to be into game action and then he wasn't able to go, so he was kept out due to a lower body injury. But since then, he's been able to get back over the weekend and he's gone back into game action. So it's good to see Bennett back. I think he should be able to continue to be a good second line center for the Panthers. I know there's been a little bit of talk about him possibly being a trade chip for the Panthers if they're not in the playoff race come trade deadline time. But I definitely think Bennett is a good key top six piece and getting him back in the lineup should definitely help the Panthers playoff race. As for Stahl, he wasn't able to get back into game action before the All-Star break. But he's now recovered from his concussion, and I expect him to probably be back within the next game or two after the All-Star break. Stahl's a pretty good fourth-line center. It did take until the early part of the season to get him signed, but he's been in almost every game since he's been signed. So when he went down with injury, it really did leave a hole in their lineup with him being a really good fourth-line center. So getting Stahl back from his concussion is really, really good. I expect Stahl to continue to be a good fourth-line center for the Florida Panthers and should help that team with their depth scoring and continue to be a good depth fourth-line center. But the bad injury news for the Florida Panthers was that goaltender Spencer Knight has now suffered an upper body injury and is going to be out day-to-day -day due to it. Now, Knight was supposed to go back into game action recently. There was a lot of talk that Knight was going to go back into game action, but it sounded like Knight wasn't ready to go, and they had to run with a tandem of Lion and Guzda which isn't overly ideal. Lions more of an AHL starter, and Guzda hasn't had any NHL experience, so not really ideal. Hopefully Knight can get back in the next little while. With the Panthers on their bye week right now through the All-Star break, hopefully Knight can just recover then and get back in game action close after the All-Star break ends. Hopefully he can get back in the game action and help this Panthers team as they're still in the hunt for a playoff spot. And even though it's not looking too much like they're going to make the playoffs right now, maybe they go on a run and get themselves back into a playoff race in the playoff spot. But they're going to need a good goaltender to do it and hopefully Knight can recover soon to help them push for a playoff spot. Then over with the Montreal Canadiens, there have been a couple of injury updates there as Yoel Edmondson has suffered an upper body injury and is out day to day right now due to the injury, while Jake Allen is back from his upper body injury and has returned to game action. Now for Edmondson, he's only out day to day right now, and the Canadians are on their All-Star break, so maybe he's back within the next couple of games for the Canadians after the All-Star break. I don't think it'll be too long for Edmondson to get back into game action. Uh, they've had a lot of defensive injuries this year with guys like Yoel Edmondson, David Savard, uh, Kaden Gooley's out right now. But the defensive position is probably one of their more healthier positions, especially given all the injuries to their forward group. So losing a good defenseman like Edmondson for the next little while is not going to be great. I do expect him to continue to be a good key top four defenseman for the Montreal Canadiens and is still a really possible trade chip for Montreal. So I definitely think that he could definitely be traded at some point too. So hopefully this injury doesn't linger on too long for the Canadians. You can get back into game action, continue to help that Canadiens top four and maybe even show that he's still a really good top four defenseman to possibly entice some teams to make a deal with the Canadiens for Edmondson. 
I definitely hope that he's not out too long, and I don't expect him to be out too long. As for Allen, he has dealt with upper body injury over the past couple of weeks. He went down a little while ago, and the Canadians had to call up Kane Primu and had Primu and Montembeau be in the tandem, which is okay. I mean, Primu's the goalie of the future, but he's probably better suited for the AHL, but they were able to make do for a little bit without Allen. The Canadians aren't doing overly fantastic this year, so losing Allen wasn't really hurting a playoff chance or anything. So they call Primu, run with those two, although Allen recovered from his injury, and now Allen's back. So it's good to see Allen back in game action. He has a really good backup goalie. He's shown that he can be a pretty good starter for the Canadians this year. And I think getting him back is huge. So good to get Allen back for the Canadians. He's the starting goaltender and a really good veteran leader on that team. But bad news that Edmondson's out right now. And hopefully he can recover and return to game action in the near future. And then just a few injury updates that could be potential season ending. Starting with the Vancouver Canucks. As Ilya Mikheyev has suffered a torn ACL and is going to need surgery and it's going to be out for the season now due to the injury. Having Mikheyevo is not going to be great for the Canucks. They are well out of a playoff spot right now and more likely trying to get lower in the standings. So losing Mikheyev for the season I don't think would hurt their playoff chances. But definitely not a good thing for the Canucks. Mikheyev was in the first year of his four-year deal with the Vancouver and had actually done pretty well. He was on pace to probably get a career high in points and maybe surpass last year's point total with Toronto. And he had definitely done well on the line with Kuzmenko and Pedersen. So I definitely think that losing Mikheyev for the next little while is not going to be good. I don't think that he'll probably make a return before the season. And his season is probably done. He'll probably need another three to four months with Vancouver not looking like they're going to make the playoffs. That does promote for the season. So... Mikheyev has had a really good first season with Vancouver. I expect Mikheyev to probably be one of the guys who stays with Vancouver over the next few seasons. Maybe not for the duration of his contract, but I do expect Mikheyev to remain with Vancouver over the next at least month before trade line and maybe in the offseason as well. But definitely a big loss to Vancouver to have Mikheyev be out for the season. Over in Columbus, there's been some more recent reports that Gustav Nyquist is dealing with a shoulder injury and that he's probably going to be out for the season as well. Now, I have seen a couple of reports from some insiders saying that it's possible that Nyquist could return before the season. While it's not likely, he could be back with like two to three weeks left in the season, which means that he could still end up being a trade chip for the Columbus Blue Jackets come trade deadline time. They may not get as much as they really wanted from him from the beginning, but I definitely think that there's a small chance they could probably get like a low on draft pick for him. So it's still possible Nyquist ends up being traded, but there is a very likely chance that Nyquist is completely out for the season with the shoulder injury. It's also possible that if he was traded to a team that was headed to the playoffs, he could miss the entirety of the season and then come back for the playoffs. It's also possible there, but hopefully Nyquist can recover from his shoulder injury. I don't think it's too bad for Nyquist, but definitely he's going to miss at least the next couple of months. So definitely it's quite possible the season is done, but there's a slight chance that he's back just before the regular season ends. And lastly with the Vegas Golden Knights. And forward Mark Stone has undergone back surgery. And is going to be out indefinitely. Now there hasn't been any talk that Stone is for sure out for the season. But given the fact that he had a back problems last year. When the Golden Knights were trying to make the playoffs. And he was playing injured. And that his back has gotten bad enough that he had to go back to have back surgery. It's just not really ideal for the Golden Knights. I think it is very likely that Stone's season is probably done. I mean, probably going to be out for at least the next two, three, four months would be my guess. So maybe if the Knights make the playoffs, he returns at some point in the playoffs. But I do think it's quite possible that he's out for the season. And this could open up a door for the Golden Knights with Stone possibly being out for the season. They could put him on LTIR and open up some cap space to go and try and acquire a replacement for him. Now, you're never going to replace Stone. He's the heart and soul of that team and has a really good top six forward. But they could go after maybe a pending unrestricted free agent who's a good key player. Maybe like a Timu Meyer or a Vladimir Tarasenko or something like that. But definitely... Losing Stone for possibly the season is not good, and hopefully he can have a speedy recovery and be back maybe before the regular season ends, but most likely at some point during the playoffs. Now that's all the injury updates I want to get to today. Now let's go over to the trade rumor part of the video. We'll start with the Vancouver Canucks, 
as on the most recent insider trading video on TSN, uh, Darren Dreger said that there was some interest in Vancouver Canucks forward Brock Besser. As we have learned over the past little while, Besser is a name that seems to be coming up a lot and is a very likely player to be moved by a deadline. But a lot of teams who are inquiring are trying to figure out how much the Canucks are willing to retain on Brock Besser to make a trade happen. Now Besser's a really good top six winger. He's probably more of a middle six winger now, but I still think he has some top six potential there. I definitely think that he's a really good forward and can put up points really well. I mean, he's more of a goal scorer. Last year, he had 23 goals and 46 points in 71 games. He's had more assists this year. He's put up 9 goals and 30 points in 41 games, which isn't too bad. And he's on pace for 60 points in the full 82-game season. So I don't think that's awful. I think that's actually pretty good for a good middle six forward. But it definitely seems like, given the fact that he hasn't been the elite-level player we saw in his first couple of seasons the last few years... Uh, that just doesn't seem like there's as much interest for getting his full cap it as there would have been a few years ago. Uh, Besser signed a three-year, $6.65 million deal in the offseason to remain with Vancouver, and he's in the first year of that deal right now. So he's got another couple of seasons left on this deal at $6.65 million. So it does seem like there's a lot of teams out there who would like Besser, but are sort of wary of acquiring him at the full $6.65 million cap hit. So some teams would really like it, the Canucks to maybe eat some salary. I wouldn't expect the Canucks to eat much salary, and I think they really want to just get rid of the Besser contract, but I would think they would maybe be willing to retain maybe like 1.15 to 1.65 on that deal to maybe bump Besser's cap it down to like five five and a half million. I think that's maybe a possibility. I'm not sure if the Canucks would be willing to do that, but I think Bester at maybe like $5 million would be very interesting for a lot of teams, especially given the fact he's on his contract for this year plus two more seasons. So I definitely think Bester in a new place uh, with a new team could maybe refine his goal scoring ability that he had a few years ago, and he could definitely continue to be a good point producing forward. And I think if the Canucks were to retain a bit of salary, there would definitely be a lot more teams interested. I definitely think the Canucks, if they were to retain some salary, could maybe get like a third round pick and a higher level player or prospect, or maybe a second round pick and a lower level player or prospect. But I definitely think, well, the Canucks are not going to get a huge return for Besser. I think they can still get a decent one. So definitely going to be interesting to see. Uh, Besser's definitely going to be a name to keep her eye on over the next little while. Definitely like to know what you think. Do you think Besser ends up being moved before the trade line? And if so, which team does he wind up being dealt to? Now over with the LA Kings. There have been a couple of reports recently that I want to touch on. First on Elliot Friedman's 32 Thoughts blog, he talked about how the LA Kings could be looking to make a move and make a move really soon. He speculated that the Kings could wind up making a move prior to the March 3rd trade line and said that in the past couple of seasons, uh, Kings GM Rob Blake has gotten some of his business done earlier than the trade line. And we see on a, a couple of years ago they dealt Muzzin well before trade line. Uh, we saw him deal Tyler Toffoli a week before trade line. Uh, we saw him deal Jack Campbell about three weeks to a month before trade line. So he does like to get things done a little bit earlier. And Freeman said that the Kings would probably want a left shot defenseman. We know the Kings have a really good forward group and a pretty good defensive core, but they would like a natural left shot defenseman. They have a few right shot defensemen, like Doughty's one of them. Doughty's a really good right shot defenseman. You have Jersey, you have Matt Roy, you have Sean Walker. Uh, Brandon Clark was up there earlier this year, and he's probably going to be a long-term fit on the right side. So they have a lot of right-shot defensemen, but not as much natural left-shot defensemen. The only ones are Mikey Anderson, who's a really good partner for Drew Doughty, and veteran Alex Edler. So getting a left-shot defenseman to sort of round out that top six would be a great fit for the LA Kings. I think they'd be open to moving a guy like Sean Walker or perhaps even Matt Roy if they are able to get a good top four left shot defenseman back in return. I know there's probably a couple of names out there. I know there's Eric Carlson. I don't think that's going to happen. But there, Eric Carlson's a good left shot defenseman. Uh, you also have a couple of rentals like maybe a Vlaslav Gavrikov or a Shane Gossespierre. Those two are really good left shot defensemen. I think could really help in the short term for LA. Uh, LA has been one of the front runners 
for a little while now for Jacob Chikrin. He's a good left shot defenseman, would fit really well with the LA Kings. And the Kings are maybe one of the only teams who can meet the Yotes asking price. So definitely think Chikrin's another possibility, but wouldn't be surprised if the Kings were to wind up trying to acquire a left shot defenseman before a trade of the line. And then on TSN's insider trading, uh, Pierre Lebrun said that the Kings may boot their goaltending situation to the offseason as he stated that the Kings want a long-term fit and aren't really interested in acquiring rentals before a trade line as he says that they don't really have interest in a guy like Ken Talbot or James Reimer. So it sounds like the Kings don't really want a pending unrestricted free agent goalie before the deadline. Uh, I was still wondering maybe if the Kings would be interested in Thatcher Demko before the deadline. No, the Kings don't really want a rental to try and get better before the, the trade line in the goaltending position, but Demko signed for three years at $5 million, and we've talked a lot about how he could probably be had for the right price from Vancouver and may not want to be with the Canucks. So definitely think that it's possible that Kings may be traded for Demko before the season. But if they don't find a goalie that they like right now, it's quite possible that they try and find a new goalie for them in the off season. So definitely going to be interesting to see. I'll let you know what you think. Which type of left shot defenseman do you think the Kings will get? And will the Kings improve the goaltending situation before the trade line or will they boot it down to the off season? Now lastly here I'm going to talk about the St. Louis Blues as the Blues have fallen out of the playoff race and seem like they could easily be heavy sellers come trade deadline time. Now if you look at the Blues right now, they're not overly in a great position. Uh, they're currently below 500. I'm pretty sure the record's like 23, 25, and 6 or something like that right now. And they're, I think, a handful of points back. I think they're like 5, 6 points back of a playoff spot. So I don't think that they're in a great position right now for the playoffs. And with them losing a lot of games going into the All-Star break, I think they could easily be heavy sellers come trade at the only time. There's a lot of pending unrestricted free agents for the St. Louis Blues, and there have been a lot of players linked to different teams. The two big guys in Tarasenko and O'Reilly, Tarasenko has this year at $7.5 million, has some trade protection, so if he was to be dealt, he would definitely have to agree to the move, but we've already known over the past couple of seasons that Tarasenko does want out of St. Louis and would welcome a fresh start. So it seems like Tarasenko could easily be moved. I've seen teams like Calgary was linked to Tarasenko. Uh, the Islanders, before they acquired Horvat, was interested in Tarasenko. It seems like the Devils might have been interested in Tarasenko. Uh, maybe the Hurricanes were interested in Tarasenko. There's a couple of teams out there who could use a good for like Vladimir Tarasenko. The Golden Knights now, with Stone possibly being out for a season, they could have some interest in Tarasenko. So I definitely think Tarasenko could be a guy who's moved before a deadline. Uh, with Ryan O'Reilly, same thing, one year, $7.5 million. Doesn't have the same amount of trade protection as Tarasenko, but he is also, I think, the more likelier of the two to stay in St. Louis. So, definitely think it's possible he ends up re-upping on maybe like a short-term, short-money deal with the St. Louis Blues. But I also think it's possible that O'Reilly gets dealt by the trade deadline. I know that the Leafs definitely have interest in O'Reilly, but I think there could be a couple of other teams that... We know the Avalanche want to upgrade their center position. Could they try and acquire O'Reilly, who has some experience playing with the Avalanche from the early part of his career? Could Colorado be a good landing spot for O'Reilly? Uh, you've got uh, teams like Carolina and Minnesota, whose center depth isn't great, and they could both use a second-line center. So I think there's a lot of teams out there who could also use a second-line center like a Ryan O'Reilly. Uh, and then you've got some more depth pieces. Uh, you got Ivan Barbashev, a good middle six winger has been speculated to also possibly be on the trade block. Uh, we know teams like Calgary and Vegas who could use a good middle six winger could possibly be interested in Barbashev. Uh, maybe a team like Tampa, uh, Carolina, uh, the Rangers. There's a couple of teams out there who could use a good point producing defenseman like Barbashev. And Barbashev doesn't have too high of a cap hit, only with 2.25 million, so he could easily be had. Uh, it seems like Nico Mikola who's a good third pair defenseman, could also be moved at the trade line. I've seen him to being linked to some defensive needed teams, like maybe Ottawa and Edmonton, uh, some other teams out there as well. So definitely think Mikula, who can bring size and physicality on the defensive end, could be moved as well. Uh, you got a couple of 
depth forwards at the offensive position. Uh, Nola Chari has a $1.25 million cap hit, and Levo, who signed a league minimum deal right now, uh, both could be moved. I know I've seen Levo possibly being shot by the St. Louis Blues. Wouldn't bring in too much of a return, but could definitely be moved. I've also seen Nola Chari be linked to possibly Vegas, given the fact that he has connections to Vegas Golden Knights head coach Bruce Cassidy, as Cassidy coached him in the AHL and also coached him with the Boston Bruins. So I definitely think Achari could be a good depth addition for the Vegas Golden Knights. There's also a couple of other teams out there, uh, maybe a Edmonton Oilers, uh, LA Kings, uh, Pittsburgh Penguins, a team who needs a good depth fourth-line center could definitely use a guy like Nola Achari. And then there's also a couple of other guys who I wouldn't be surprised if trade rumors started to pick up around them with guys like maybe a Tory Krug. We know that Krug has been in and out of trade rumors over the past year. He might be dealt. I think it's possible. I think it's less likely for right now. It's probably more likely in the offseason. Same thing with Marco Scandella, who I think is probably more likely to be dealt in the offseason. I could also see him maybe deal Thomas Grace. Grace is, only has this year left on his deal. After this, he'll be an unrestricted free agent. And for a team who needs a good third string goalie, maybe Grace could be a good fit for them as well. So I definitely think the Blues could be wide open, especially if they continue to lose as they have over the last little while. And if they fall a little bit farther out of a playoff spot, we could see a fire sale in St. Louis. I definitely think that's a possibility. But I'd definitely like to know what you think. Are the Blues sellers by the deadline? And if so, which players do you see the Blues wind up moving? So that's all I'm going to talk about for today. Remember to like this video and subscribe. I also do a blog, which I will leave a link to in the description below. And I can't wait to see you guys all for next week's video. See you guys soon.